From Delaware's most award-winning radio news team, this is WDEL Video News. Here's Chris Carl. Among Delaware's top stories for Monday, January 8th, state lawmakers have controversial issues on their plate as they get ready re to return to work. Wilmington has a new fire chief and a memorial for those killed on Delaware roads. Here are the details. A Wilmington man faces several charges in connection with a traffic accident which killed a pedestrian. State police say Jesus Torres fled the scene after hitting a 78-year-old woman around noon yesterday on Maryland Avenue near Robinson Lane. Torres was pulled over by a county cop in Albin Park for unrelated traffic violations. He was arrested after the officer learned what had happened. The victim's name is being withheld until her family is told. Open government, workers' compensation, and prison reform. Just a few issues members of the General Assembly will tackle when they return to Legislative Hall tomorrow. But WDEL's legislative correspondent Carl Konevsky says lawmakers will start with one of the last issues they addressed last year. Legislators approved a ban on yard waste at the Cherry Island landfill last June, a ban that began January 1st. Senate Majority Whip Patty Blevin says the ban needs to be rethought, giving people time to come up with alternatives. I think the communities in Newcastle County are very concerned um, that we're not quite ready for this yard waste ban. I'd like to see a delay of maybe a year or so to give the communities time to get ready to make sure that everyone understands what they need to do. State Representative Debbie Hudson, a Greenville Republican, says the House will deal with that very issue right off the bat. Representative Smith has a bill that would eliminate the current rules that we're operating under since January 1st, and we're going to start all over again. That bill specifically says the Secretary of the Department of Natural Resources is forbidden to ban yard waste without the approval of the General Assembly. Another priority for the House Republican Caucus is to try to help keep Delaware's two automaking plants in the state. Hudson wants to eliminate the gross receipts tax for Chrysler and GM, but Blevin says that might not be the right answer. We have a deadline for appealing to the auto manufacturers, and that would be by February. So we need to take an active approach to that right away. We're all going to want to hear from uh, Chrysler and from General Motors on what are the issues most important to them. We've all heard that workers' compensation is the most important issue, and if we address that in January, that'll be a big step forward. Um, I think that we'd like to hear from them what they uh, what their uh, view is on the gross receipts and whether it, how big of a difference it would make to them. Lawmakers expect to see workers' compensation legislation before the end of the month. And as lawmakers get back to work, many people want to see that work done out in the open. Blevin says she expects to see legislation aimed at making it happen. I think we'll see Senate um, open government bills in both the Senate and the House, and I hope that we're able to make more progress on that issue um, this year, um, opening up the Bonneville Committee and the Joint Finance Committee to uh, uh, to more public scrutiny, I think that very much would be welcomed by the majority of the legislature. Similar legislation introduced in the last General Assembly died in the Senate Judiciary Committee. I'm Carl Konefsky, 1150 AM, WDEL. Wilmington's Fire Department is under new leadership. WDEL's John Collins reports. Sound the alarm, the Wilmington Fire Department has a new chief. Willie Patrick Jr. was officially promoted to lead the Wilmington Fire Department in a ceremony at the City County Building on Sunday. Patrick says that he's ready to get to work. I guess um, it's a feeling of euphoria because, because I'm, I'm excited about being, this is the pinnacle of my career, being the chief of the Wilmington Fire Department. I started out 26 years ago with aspirations just to, just to be effective. And, and this is the ultimate. The new chief says Wilmington's force has a special role to play in the first state. The, the biggest thing that, that I see is the fact that um, the Wilmington Fire Department is the, should, it's the organization that leads the fire service, should lead the fire service. We're the largest uh, fire department in the state. Um, have more men, more equipment. So we should set an example for the fire service in the state. We sh there should be a cooperation, a level of cooperation with the other fire, fire service agencies throughout the state. Right? And that's what I want to, and that's, it, it's in place. That's something that, that's, been, that's been fostered throughout the last few years. That's, but I want to build on that. I want us to have a better relationship with the state and county fire service. And Sunday's promotion ceremony means more than just a new badge for incoming Chief Willie Patrick Jr. My mother um, uh, passed away 15 years ago. And she was she, she was a woman. Who, this this is her birthday. She was born on uh, um, 
January the 7th, but she was a woman who had such an influence in my life. She was a, she was a Christian woman, she was a woman of God, and this was, I mean, she would have wanted it just, just this way, on a Sunday, you know, giving reverence to God. And, and, and I think this was um, just um, an awesome opportunity for me to just get, do something for her, even though she's not here. The ceremony also included four other promotions in the ranks of the city's fire department. Patrick takes the reins of the department from retired chief James Ford. Reporting for Wilmington, I'm John Collins, 1150 AM WDEL. Senator Biden says sending more troops to Iraq is not the answer. WDEL News continues in a moment. You could spend your money at the gas pump, or you could spend it on those sexy pumps at your favorite store. Let Dart do the driving. Travel smart. Choose Dart. Members of Delaware's congressional delegation have met with the head of Chrysler in an effort to save the assembly plant in Newark. The Daimler Chrysler unit has said that it will announce a restructuring plan in February, and analysts say it's likely to include the closing of the Newark plant. The plant employs 2,100 people building the Dodge Durango and Aspen Sport utility vehicles. Senators Biden and Carper and Congressman Castle met yesterday with Chrysler Chief Tom Lasorda, who is at the Detroit Auto Show. Senator Biden says sending more troops to Iraq is not the answer to the problems there right now. Speaking on NBC's Meet the Press, Biden said three years ago he was in favor of sending more troops. But he says today's situation requires a political solution, not a military solution. It made sense to surge 60, 70, 100,000 troops before there was a civil war. There is now a civil war. You need a political solution before you can get a physical solution. Unless Maliki is willing to deal the Sunnis in so they abandon the insurgency, unless the Sunnis are willing to allow under the Constitution the Shia to control their local districts like the Kurds do, there is no possibility. None. Biden said he thinks the U.S. has about another year to solve the region's issues. The Delaware Democrat also promoted his presidential bid, saying he will set up an exploratory committee by the end of the month that will help him raise money and gauge support for his candidacy. Construction is underway on the Delaware Highway Memorial Garden. WDEL's Frank Gerace takes a look. The 11,000-square-foot garden being built at the Smyrna Rest Area on the DuPont Highway is meant to pay tribute to all victims of fatal traffic accidents in Delaware. The rest area was chosen as the garden's location because Delaware's Clear Zone Act prohibits roadside memorials, which can be a safety hazard. Ground was broken for the garden in 2004, but budget shortfalls forced the project to be put on hold till last month. Community transportation funds will cover most of the $122,000 cost. When it's complete, the garden will include trees, shrubs, flowering plants, and about 4,500 bricks bearing the names of accident victims. Frank Gerace, 11.50 a.m. WDEL. The Eagles kick the Giants out of the playoffs. WDEL Sports and your Delaware Acu with a forecast coming up. Looking to gain an edge in the technology or design field? Wilmington College's Division of Information Technology and Advanced Communications offers state-of-the-art facilities equipped with the latest tools. Did you know that Wilmington College has been preparing students for careers in media arts and technology over the past seven years? Achieve balance, achieve success. In WDEL Sports, David Akers kicked a 38-yard field goal as time expired to give the Eagles a 23-20 win over the New York Giants in the wild card round of the playoffs yesterday. Brian Westbrook rushed for 141 yards, including a 49-yard touchdown run. And Jeff Garcia passed for a score as the Eagles advanced to a date with the New Orleans Saints on Saturday night. Danny Heatley scored two goals and added an assist as the Ottawa Senators routed the Flyers 6-1 and Tiro Nindamaki lost for the 11th straight time in goal for the Flyers. And in women's college basketball, Delaware forced UNC Wilmington into 29 turnovers as the Hens routed the Seahawks 66-38. Tyresa Smith led Delaware with 19 points and 7 rebounds. Alina Koshansky scored 12 and had 4 steals, while Courtney Irving scored 10 and grabbed 8 boards. Delaware raised its record to 12-2 and went to 3-0 and in conference play. Your WDEL Delaware Acu with a forecast, a flash, flash flood watch in effect through noon. We'll see periods of rain through the morning. Then clearing in the afternoon, temperatures falling, though, from a morning high of 55. Tonight, increasing clouds, low 32. Tomorrow, cloudy with a high of 46. Get news updates throughout the day. Delaware's top stories at the top of the hour on 1150 AM WDEL or anytime right here at WDEL.com, including news video from Delaware and around the world from WDEL and the Associated Press. 
I'm Chris Carl. Thanks for watching.